Major averages up 50% from their lows in March. There's a lot of sense out there that the recovery is upon us. And more people turning bullish now, not our guest today, Peter Schiff, president of Europe Pacific Capital, now running for Senate in Connecticut, also author of Crash Proof 2.0. Uh, Peter, so you don't buy literally or figuratively the rally that we're seeing here in the stock market? Well, I own stocks. I own a lot of stocks outside the United States where I think the fundamentals are much better. And I think we have legitimate bull markets. And, of course, when you have a weakening dollar, if you own foreign securities, you know, you benefit from the weakness of the dollar. But I don't think the strength in the U.S. stock market right now means anything with respect to a future economic recovery. I think the market is rising simply because, A, it fell dramatically, and markets don't go in a straight line. You're always going to have rallies in bear markets, and I think we're experiencing a bear market rally. And, of course, if you put uh, our rally in, in context, look at what's happening outside the United States. We are lagging, the U.S. Is the, is, the, is the worst performing market in the world, and it's the worst performing market for a reason. So is the worst over? Are we going to go crash through the March lows? No, not at all. I mean, as far, now, as far as the stock market, will we take out that low? It's hard to say. I think there's a good chance that we will. But the key is not will we make a new low in dollars, but will we make a new low in euros or will we make a new low in gold? And I think we will. I think if you go back to the low point of the market uh, in March of this year, I think the Dow was worth about 8 ounces of gold. Now, remember, the Dow was worth 43 ounces of gold in 2000, so it's already declined dramatically. I think the Dow will trade well below 8 ounces of gold before this bear market is over. I think by the end of next year, you know, we could certainly be at 5 ounces of gold or lower in the Dow. But by the time it's all over, based on all the bad things the government is doing, I would not be surprised to see the Dow gold price close to one to one, which is still a dramatic decline, maybe a 90% decline in the price of the Dow measured in gold from where we are right now. So you're still long gold, I assume, and you're still recommending gold to your yeah, clients? Yeah, I mean, gold now is around $1,000 an ounce. Again, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see it at 5000 over the next several years. It could be a lot higher than 5000 if we don't do the right thing soon. Uh, but I also think there's a lot of opportunity uh, in foreign markets. I'm very, very bullish on some of the Asian economies. I think, you know, they're doing a lot right that we're doing wrong. Uh, they're saving their money. Uh, they're investing. Uh, you know, I think uh, as would far you, as... Would you buy the Chinese ETF? Because uh, you were talking about China before. Yeah, well, actually, possibly. you know, uh, with, last month I launched my first mutual fund, the Euro-Pacific Halter China Fund. Uh, and so it's specifically focused on Chinese companies. Uh, so I'm very bullish on that part of the world. I think there's a lot of value in those markets. Uh, you don't have to pay high PEs. Dividend yields are good. And more importantly, uh, the income is in Chinese RMB or Hong Kong dollars. And I do believe... Uh, sometime soon, we're going to see a, an official depegging uh, of the RMB from the dollar, and that could lead to the currency doubling or tripling in a very short period of time. And anything else besides from China stocks and gold? Because a lot of people look at gold over the last 30, 40 years and say, come on, it's no correlation. You just have these brief panics where crazy gold bugs say, oh, the world's going to end. You've got to go well, into gold. So is there anything else? Well, you've got to look at the history. Right? The last time we had a major rally in gold was the 1970s. Right? The 1970s were the result of the policies that we pursued in the 1960s of debasing our money. We were running big budget deficits to finance the Vietnam War, the Great Society, the War on Poverty, the missions to the moon. And ultimately, we created too many dollars, and the dollar collapsed. The dollar ended up losing two-thirds of its value during the 1970s against the yen, against the Swiss franc, the, the Deutschmark. And so investors moved into gold. You had a big move into gold, gold went from $35 an ounce to $1,000 an ounce. Now, we, we dealt with our problems. In 1980, we brought in Ronald Reagan. We brought in Paul Volcker, who pretty much did the exact opposite of what Clinton and Obama are doing. Right? And so gold then, you know, we did the right thing, and so gold was able to come down. But now gold is rising again because we made the same mistakes in the 1990s that we made in the 1960s. Unfortunately, we don't have uh, uh, Reagan and, 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 and Volker. And, Volker. Uh, and so I think this is going to be an even bigger gold rally uh, than we had in the 1970s percentage-wise. And people have to understand that and, and participate in it. And, and, you know, and when gold really starts to move, when we start moving up $100 a day, you know, people are going to start to notice. A lot of people are going to be afraid to buy. I think right now gold is still climbing a wall of worry. Maybe once it's two or $3,000 an ounce, we'll start to have more of a you know, NASDAQ-type 1990 feel where more and more people start buying it, and then we can really go into, into a bull right. market. And so, since, I'm sorry, since you've entered politics, I've got to ask you, you talked about Clinton and Obama. What about the guy who came between them? You're not a big fan of President Bush's economic policies either, are you? No. Unfortunately, George Bush is the Herbert Hoover of our era. You know, he's given the Republican Party a bad name, I think, and he's given uh, free market capitalism a bad name. I don't know that Bush is a bad guy. I just think he got a lot of bad advice. And unfortunately, the same 
people from Wall Street who advised George Bush are advising President Obama. That's why he's making all the same mistakes as Bush. The only difference is he's making them bigger. He's doing them on a grander scale. And the same thing with the Federal right, Reserve. Because he's trying to clean up the mess that By Bush making left a bigger in. mess. Right, yes.